All right, welcome, uh, welcome, early birds, to uh, to today's lecture. I uh, again, I apologize. It um, I apologize. It has to be uh, on Zoom and not in person. Um, this uh, this whole jury duty thing is uh, the schedule is kind of crazy. In fact, the judge was the judge told us last week that Fridays would only be in the afternoon. So I was like, oh great, I'll be able to do my lectures on Friday morning. And then yesterday she said. Oh, I changed my schedule and I got somebody else to fill in. So come on back tomorrow morning at 10. <laughs> so, oh, I guess I'm not doing my lecture tomorrow. Uh, so that's uh, that's the way that goes. Um, so let's uh, let's talk about something interesting today. Uh, let me share my screen here and then <clears throat> let's see. That's not my, uh, can did I share the right screen? Can you see binary heaps on the screen or is it me? I see the zoom. Oh. <laughs> Hang on, I did the wrong one. Hold on a sec. Uh, let me try that again. Share screen. That's the one. There we go. Better? Okay, thank you very much. Uh, yeah, I once did the same thing and talked for like five minutes before anybody was like, we can't see your screen. Uh -huh. All right. So uh, first of all, today we're going to talk about actually my favorite data structure, which again, I wish I was in person so I could you know, be there for this. But this is, this is my favorite data structure. It's called the binary heap. And uh, I'll explain why it's my favorite data structure. Uh, I happen to think it has some of the coolest algorithms associated with it. And it's another container. And it's another container that's very specific in the same way that the stack and the queue are very specific. Uh, they, it is a, uh, a data structure that enables you to very quickly find uh, the highest priority element. In fact, it gives you back the highest priority element if you ask for the next element. And uh, then it rearranges itself in a way that makes it so it's easy to get the next highest element. So it's, uh, it's very, a very useful one. And in fact, last week or on Monday, Diana talked about uh, how priority queues are used in various uh, various ways for various real life problems. And a binary heap is what we generally build a priority queue out of. So, uh, so that's one of the reasons it's my, uh, it's my favorite uh, data structure. Um, a couple of announcements. Okay, so assignment four is due technically today. You've got a grace period until tomorrow. Um, uh, quick thumbs up or uh, hands up or whatever if you think that uh, this was the hardest assignment so far. Yeah, this was a tricky assignment. Um, why? Because recursion is hard. Uh, why is recursion hard? Because there's you, you can't. It's not as it's not as easy to process in your brain. Also, the problems that we've given you are challenging problems. Hopefully, interesting problems. At least the. I mean, I I think the tile problem is cool because you're solving a cool puzzle game and and so forth. Um, but it is challenging. So so thank you for uh, bearing with the uh, the fact that the layer has been crazy busy and office hours have been crazy busy and. Um, you have midterm week and, and all that. So <clears throat> both Neil and I and the SLs understand that this is a challenging uh, assignment and a challenging quarter um, or a challenging week in general. So um, don't, uh, don't beat yourself up too hard if you've been like, wow, I've been working so hard on this one and it's not happening. I, 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 do, I do understand that. Um, but again, remember, and this is the other thing this assignment teaches you is that some problems are kind of complex. And when you get into the real world and you're doing you're doing programming, there are a lot of complex problems out there that you need to sit down and really think about uh, to solve. So this, these are some examples of, of that. Um, so, so that's that. Assignment five and assignment six. And I mean, think about this. I think I got I have to check if there's one more assignment. But the next assignments are um, still challenging. I'm not going to lie and say they aren't challenging, but I think they're a little less intense than this one. Like, I think you'll be able to wrap your head around what am I trying to do a little bit easier. And yeah, so there's, let me think about this. Yeah, I'll have to look and see how many uh, assignments exactly there are, but they're, they're, they're still challenging, but I think getting over the hump of this week is, uh, is gonna be the, the hardest part here. Okay, so let's talk about today. So we're gonna talk about these binary heaps Chris's favorite data structure. And what is a binary heap? We'll talk about it specifically, but it's a tree-like structure. This is the first data structure that we're going to see that actually has tree behavior. And when you think of tree behavior, you should be thinking of things that look kind of like this. In fact, this is exactly what uh, a binary heap looks like if, as I'm drawing it like this. And when you're thinking about binary heaps, you should be thinking, oh, I can actually do things 
in a way that is logarithmic because I'm gonna be able to go down this tree in some way that's logarithmic as it turns out. Um, so this is the first data structure that we're gonna dig into that has some logarithmic properties to it, which is also another, another neat uh, thing about it. Okay, a pri a, the, the heap property is what we're gonna talk about. And I'll, I'll explain that more. We're gonna talk about priority queues um, and we're gonna talk about the two cool algorithms that, that I think are interesting and you'll have to do them for next assignment called adding and removing from the heap. And the fact that uh, they are interesting the interesting algorithms means that you have to kind of understand them. But as you see, I think they're kind of cool. All right, so let's jump into what a binary heap itself is. It is a tree-based structure and it is it satisfies this thing called the heap property. The heap property says, okay, assume that all of your, what we call nodes in the tree, have a number associated with them. Okay, that number could be a key, that number could just be a value, but let's just say it's the, let's say we're talking about a bunch of numbers put into this heap and we want to put them in there in, in a certain way. The heap property says that a parent in the heap, something higher up in the heap, in fact, something direct, well, actually it's not exactly higher up in the heap, I shouldn't say that, a parent in the heap always has a higher priority than any of their direct children or grandchildren as it, as it turns out. So taking a look at this diagram right here, five, and, and by the way, we're saying, we're gonna talk mostly about min heaps where what that means is the priority is the lowest number. The highest priority is the lowest number. So that's what we mean there. So in this case, five has a higher priority than both of its children, 10 and eight, and eight has a higher priority than 14 and 13 because they're, they're higher numbers, okay, numerically, eight. And if you think about it, you're like, we're number one. Well, the number one means, oh, you're the highest priority. That's the way it is. Or the number one, you're number one going into the hospital for, a waiting, for the hospital waiting room or whatever. So that's the, that's the idea there. Um, you, it doesn't have to be the case that, it doesn't have to be the case that, let me see if I have an example here. Um, this, is not, this is not the greatest example uh, heap because it doesn't matter between children, which ones like the other side, you don't have to worry about anything on the other side as being a higher priority than your direct like lineage. And we'll see, exam we'll see examples of that as we go through. Okay, that's a min heap, a max heap just for uh, to be, uh, to be uh, consistent about talking about the other type of heap, a max heap, means that the higher number is a higher priority. And so it just would look exactly the opposite where 50 is a higher number. So it's a higher, it's uh, it, all of its children have to be lower numbers in a max heap. But this is not the one we're gonna talk about norm, uh, mostly. We're mostly gonna focus on min heaps where all you have to think about is, okay, if I have a number, the lower the number, the higher priority. So that's what we're, that's what we're talking about in a heap. Okay, and remember the heap property says, anytime you have a number, in, in the heap, any of its direct children are going to be a lower priority, okay? Which means that the top or the root of the tree is always the highest priority, okay? So no matter what, in a tree, the one that's at the, or in, the, in a heap, the one that's at the top is the highest priority. So that's what we're going to do for, we're gonna do for binary heaps. Now, there's no orderings between the siblings. Uh, the siblings are, of course, you know, they have the same parent, right? So in this case, if we look at this, um, these two heaps are functionally equivalent in the sense that you've got a five as the root in both, and then its two children are 10 and 12, but it doesn't matter which one is bigger of the children. There's no ordering between the children. So the 10 could be there and the, on the left and the 12 could be on the right, but it doesn't matter. The 12 could be there and the 10 could be there. So don't, don't forget that when you're dealing with heaps. You don't need to worry about the, the, the siblings as far as their priority goes. It's just in, in the direct line of descendants, okay? So question for you, which of the following are min heaps? Take a minute to take, take a sec to look at this and see if you can figure it out, people who are here. Which of these are min heaps? And you kind of have to look at mostly, mostly down there before you figure it out. Anybody have an idea? Throw something in the chat. If you have an idea, which one might be the min? The second one. So Kate, you said this one was the min heap and you say this one is not a min heap. Yeah, what Kate, why did you say the top one was not a min heap? That's all right. No, can you put, can you paste it in the chat? 
yeah, the 11 and the 12 is a problem, right? 12 is a bigger number than 11, and it's which means that it would have a lower priority, but its child has a higher priority. So this means it's not a heap. The rest of it, I believe the entire rest of the heap is fine. It's just those two. So to be a heap, it has to have the heap property, meaning this is not a heap. This one, if you look at all of them, if you pick any one, 36, well, both of its children, 46 and 42 are bigger, so that's fine. Pick 24, 25 and 26 are bigger. Oh, and by the way, 19 is smaller and 13 is smaller. So you could do this for the entire one. So very good. That's how we determine if it's a heap. Now, sometimes we will find out that we will get a set of numbers and we will, it, that we'll get a heap, we'll modify that heap in some way, and then we will have to make, do an algorithm to make it go back into a heap. So that's what we're going to do. So we're going to we're going to make modifications where it's not a heap anymore, but then we have to run an algorithm that turns it back into a proper heap. So that's what we're going to see in a few minutes. Okay. All right. Binary heaps are what we call completely filled, and that's uh, in a tree lingo. What that means is going from the the root you fill the root and then you start filling from the left to the right for the next level down. Okay, so if I had, if I was, if I was taking the numbers in here, five, then I would fill in 10, then I would fill in eight. And now I would go down and say, well, where's the next left child? Oh, it's the left child of 10. So I'd fill in the 12, then the 11, then the 14, then the 13. It does not have to have a full level. Notice this heap down here, the bottom of the heap, that's not filled, not filled, not filled, not filled, not filled, not filled. But you couldn't do it in a way that you had, you couldn't put the 43 here and not fill this one. That would not be a completely filled heap or, or completely filled tree in this case, because you're missing one there. So you always have to make sure that if it's a heap, not only does it have that heap property, but it's also completely filled. And that means the 43 would have had to have gone in there. And we'll see how this, how this manifests it. Uh, a little bit later, okay? All right. How do you actually store a heap? When we're talking about tree structures, it turns out there's many different ways to store a tree. And next week we're gonna talk about um, some, we're gonna talk about trees which are distinct from heaps. We're gonna talk about generic, generic trees and we're gonna store them in a very different way than we're storing this heap as it turns out. But a heap, as it turns out, works great if you store it in an array or a vector, either way, you've got that. Well, what is an array or vector? It's, an, it's a, uh, a, a set of locations where one is one after the other in memory, just like any other vector or array that we've seen in the class so far. Um, and that, this is the way we're gonna store the, uh, the heap, okay? And it turns out this is partially because of the completely filled nature of heaps. That's what it actually works out. So here's what it actually looks like. I'm going to just show you this heap. If I put it into a vector, it looks like this. Now, let's think if we see if we can figure out what's going on here. Here's the indexes into the vector, and these are the values. The 5 is the root, and guess what? It went at index 0. The 10 is the next one on the left, and that goes at index 1. The 8 goes at the next one here. Guess what? It's going to go 12, 11, 14, 13, 12, 11, 14, 13, 22, 43. This is one of the reasons that it, it, it works great for or an array works great is because it's, it's filled in the way that it is. All of these ones are empty, but guess what? Everything after the 43 here is also empty. So it's in an, it's in a, uh, in an array is, the, is one of the best ways to store a heap. So it's kind of cool. And, and, and by the way, this is a data structure and we're actually digging into like, how does this data structure work? By the way, you'll also notice there's no code today. Um, there's no code that I'm going through because you're going to write the code for the, the heap. So you're going to build your own heap for this next assignment. So that's what's going on there. Now, the coolest thing about this, in fact, I'm going to make the screen a little smaller so I can fit all of the heap on and the following text. What's really cool about this is that if you're given an array of a heap, if you want to figure out a particular nodes, children or parents, there's very easy formulas to do that. And in fact, you can, you don't have to walk through the heap at all. You don't have to traverse it all. You can say, oh, I'm going to go to a particular value and I'm going to apply this formula to the index and it's going to give you where its children or parents are. So, or parent, there's one parent per, uh, per each child only has one parent. Um, each parent can have two children, up to two children, zero, one or two. 
Okay, for example, 22 has no children. Uh, 11 has no children. Uh, let's see, do I have any in here that have one? No, there's none in here that have one, but 12 has two children, et cetera. Okay, so take a look at this. Here's the, here's the, the formula for this. If you are at a node, let's pick, um, let's pick the, the 12. If we're at 12, if we want to figure out 12's left child, given that 12 is at index three, you apply the following very simple formula. You multiply two times that index to get six, and then you add one. Well, two times, two times three is six plus one gives you seven. The left child of 12 had better be at index seven, which is the 22. And oh boy, if we look up here, 12, 22 is the left child of 12. Ah, very cool. That formula works. And you could check it for any of them. Let's say um, we check um, eight. Eight is at index, here, I'll do it this way. Eight is at index, uh, let's see, eight is at index two. Two times two is four plus one is five. If we go to five, we should find the left child of eight, which is hopefully is 14. Oh, good. Look up there. It's 14. So that's how we're translating this idea of going from the, the, the tree-like heap to an array. We just apply these little formulas and we find, figure it out. Okay, if we want to find the right, the right uh, child of a particular one, we do exactly the same things if we had two. So in this case, if we were to find the right child of 10, 10 is at index one, we apply this formula, two times one plus two. Two times one is two, plus two is four. If we go to four, we better find the right child of 10, which is 11. Oh, look, it works. You can do this for any of them, right? Even zero, you, you look at uh, the root element, zero, zero times uh, two is zero plus two gives you, uh, gives you two and eight is the right child of five. Pretty cool, huh? Guess what? You can do the exact same thing to find a child, a particular node's parent. So let's look at um, the 43 over here. The 43 is at eight. If we divide, if we subtract one from the index and then divide by two, we get the parent for any of them as it turns out. Okay, so eight minus two or eight minus one rather is seven, seven divided by two, seven divided by two is what? It's 3.5, but this is integer math. So it's three. So if we go to index three, we will hopefully find the parent of 43, 12. Oh, look on our tree. It is the parent of 43. Cool. Works for any of them, right? So let's try another one. Um, let's look at, uh, let's look at 14. 14 is at index five, five minus one is four. Four divided by two is two. Index two gives you the node eight. Eight is the parent of 14. Let's see if it works for 13. 13 is at index six. Six minus one is five. Five divided by two is two because we're truncating it. 2.5 is truncated to two. Guess what? Two is also the parent of 13. Or it, two, index two is where the eight is, is also the parent of 13. Pretty cool. So those formulas are, by the way, they're all, o, they're all O1 formulas. You don't have to look through how, how, it doesn't matter how big the heap is. You just apply that formula to the index and you get either the parent or the, either of the children. Cool, very cool. Okay. And if, you, if you're writing code to do this, you'll probably have a little function that just is like left child and right child and parent. And you'll just put those in there and that's it. Pretty cool. Questions on that so far? No, good. All right. There's also a property called the heap size. And the heap size is just the number of elements that are actually in the heap. OK, so the heap size here is nine because uh, there's one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine elements that are actually in the heap. Even if there were numbers here, if we said the heap size is nine, these are the only ones we care about. OK, so that's another property of the heap, how many elements it has in it. Okay? All right. Now, there's three important operations for a heap, okay? The heap is actually very, it's called a, well, as I said before, the heap is called a, uh, is used for a priority queue. So you can start thinking queue. So these terms will hopefully make sense. Um, peak returns the element with the highest priority. It basically says, hey, given my heap, which one's gonna come out next? Which one is the highest priority? And it will just give you the, the it'll return to you the highest priority, okay? We've also got NQ, which says, hey, take a new element, put it into the heap, 
and make sure that it's still a heap after you enter it into the heap. Cool. And then of course we have DQ as well. DQ for a priority heap gives you the uh, removes the element with the highest priority, which is usually the lowest number. And it's also the one at the root of the of the queue or of the heap rather. Okay. So let's look at some, let's look at some algorithms for figuring out what those are. Okay. And this is the in queue and DQ are the two cool operations. I'm the two cool algorithms I mentioned a little bit earlier. Okay. All right. So peak. Peak is going to give you the element at the at the root. Well, no matter what heap you have, where is the element at the root at the root? Always at index zero. So all you have to do if you have this heap, if this was a val, if this was a very a pointer or a, 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 an array uh, or a vector, and you do heap bracket zero and you return that value, that's peak, right? This is O1, this is constant. You don't have to look through anything to figure out what the, uh, the, high, the, most, uh, the, the highest priority element is in a heap, you don't have to do anything. I mean, you have, to, you have to just basically say, give me the value at zero. It doesn't matter if there's a billion elements in this heap, it, will, it is still constant behavior. We love constant behavior. Constant behavior is the holy grail of uh, big O analysis, right? We say, great, give me it, it's instant. So this is one of the reasons heaps are great data structures because it's uh, an instant uh, gives you peak. Okay. All right. Now let's talk about NQ. Okay. NQ means what? We're going to put a new element into the heap. Okay. Now let's say that I was going to NQ nine. Can you figure out where nine needs to go in this heap? Do you have any ideas? Where would the nine go in the heap? You can put it in the chat, or you can just you can just kind of speak up. Doesn't matter to me. And Maybe at the at the first child on the left. Yeah, so you could say that nine should maybe be down here. Could it also be over here? Could be, right, Jonathan? If you, because all it needs to be is one of the children of five in this case, right? So I like that it's that. Um, it has to be bigger than 10. I mean, it's, it's a higher priority than 10. Now it is a lower priority than nine. So couldn't it be somewhere down here below here? Could be down there too, right? Because it's got an eight does have to be higher, but so it could either be like here or it could be somewhere down here. But the question is, how do we put this nine into the heap given this array so that it gets, it becomes a heap? That's the tricky part, right? And this is why I said, this is such an interesting algorithm, okay? Let's, um, let me ask you one more question. Where's the next place an element's going to go? Where do you think the next place is gonna go? And this, this has to do with where it's gonna be complete. Could I put an element here? Yes. Could I put it here, 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 or here? No, because that would mean that this one's empty and it's not a completely filled tree. So let's actually start this way. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you this algorithm and I'm going to uh, I'm going to show you this algorithm, and then I'm going to when we get to the DQ, I'm going to show you something a little bit, or I'm going to let you take a couple minutes and and try to figure out DQ. But first, it's a matter of hey, you got to see how some of these algorithms work. Let's do this. We know that this one is going to be filled when this heap ends up being a heap again after we put nine into it. We know there's going to be some element there. Let's start by putting the element, if we're in queuing nine, let's put the nine right there. Now, is this a heap if we put the nine right there? No, we have broken the heap. We have broke, we have said, this is no longer a heap, right? So we need to run an algorithm on this data structure to say, okay, uh, let's figure out if we can turn it back into a heap by manipulating the elements in there, okay? One way you might think to do this is say, hey, let's start at the root and start going down and say, is everybody good? Right and left and right and left and right and left. Unfortunately, by the time you got down to the 11, you'd say, 
oh, well, what's wrong? The 11 and nine are not correct, right? That's, the, that's one of the first problems here. What if we said, oh, let's just switch the 11 and then nine. Did we fix our heap? No, because the nine is still not is still smaller than 10 and it can't be there. So by going down the heap like that, we kind of break the, we, 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 we would have to go down the heap and then maybe go down again and go down again. And that seems ridiculous. However, what if we did this? I'm trying to put the nine there, right? What if we say, I know I just put the nine there, but let's go up the heap. What do we know about nine versus its parent? Can we find its parent? Yes, we have that formula which finds its parent instantly. So that's nice and fast. Can we check the nine and the 11 against each other? Yes. Who's got to be changing here or, or what has to happen here? They are, they are obviously wrong because nine should be above the 11. Why don't we just swap them? What if we put the 11 here and then the nine here? We're not done yet, but this time we're going up the heap. We're not going down the heap. We're going up the heap. Why don't we next just check nine versus its parent? And nine versus 10, what's got to happen? Well, it's got to swap, right? How do we know that it has to swap? Because 10 is a lower priority than nine and nine is, uh, needs to be the parent of 10. So guess what? If we move this up here, nine, all right? And then 10 down here, we're good to go. And then if we look at the five versus the nine, do we need to change anything? No, we do not. Nine and five are perfectly fine. That's what our heap ends up looking like. Okay, I'll just draw it again over here without all the arrows. Five, nine, eight, and then 12, 10, and then 14, 13, 22, 43, and 11. Is that a proper heap? Indeed it is. So, uh, so what that means is this actually works. Now, you might be saying to yourself, wait a minute, I put the nine here, but what if the nine happened to be uh, bigger than the 12? Could that ever be the case? It would never have gotten here. It would never have been promoted up here without, let me do this. Let me show you. If we put the, I'll put the 11 here and the nine here, and then we're checking the nine versus the 10. Before this was a heap, which means that 10 has to be smaller than all of its children. If we're about to move nine up here to 10, and that means nine has to be smaller than 10, therefore it means that 10 or nine has to be smaller than everything over here by default. Yeah. Kate, good question. Kate says, what if you have two equal elements? Um, let's not worry about equal elements right now. If you have equal elements, what we could say is um, it actually would work just fine. You would just say, I don't need to swap them. But let's not worry about those details quite yet. Um, it it won't, won't actually matter as it turns out. You can have multiple elements um, in there of the same priority and it, it will work out fine as well. Um, for now, let's just do it with, with different ones, but good question. And, and that's, a, that's a, a, a good idea. It's like, hey, what happens? Don't worry too much about that. If you go back and look at it, you'll go, oh, it will work just fine with, with equal elements. Because let's say this was a 10. Um, if we're gonna swap the nine with the 10, 10 has to at least be as big or, or sm small or smaller than the 10 down here. So uh, it, it's gonna work out just fine. The nine is fine to move up there, okay? All right, so what do we have? We just built an algorithm. This algorithm that I just described to you, okay? Um, let, let me actually walk you through while I'm thinking about it. Let me walk you through um, how the array changes in this thing, okay? Um, so first thing we did was we put nine, or sorry, we, we put nine in the next available slot. How do you know where the next available slot is? Well, you know how many, you know the heap size, and you put it at the index of the heap size. As it turns out, heap size was nine, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And what we did was we said, oh, okay, let's put it at index of the heap size, which means we're gonna put our nine at index nine. That's how we knew to put it there. So you always start by putting the new value you're in queuing at the heap, at the end of the heap in the sense of uh, what the heap size is. Okay, so we start with that. And then, 
we said, oh, let's check our, the, our, our, not our nine and 11. So let me actually do it up here. Uh, there we go. We said, hey, let's look at index nine. Hey, how do I find index nine's uh, parent, which is what I need to do. I subtract one, eight, eight divided by two is four. If we go to index four, 11 is the parent. And then we check 11 versus nine. And if nine is less than 11, we better swap them. And the swap is pretty easy, right? You have a temporary variable, you put the, you put the uh, 11 in a temporary variable, you put the nine there, and then you put the 11 there and we've swapped them. And then we repeat the process for the new index. And if we ever get to a point where the new index is, uh, or the new value is greater than its parent, we stop. If not, we keep going. We actually have to keep going on this one. So at this point, we now have gotten down to here and we've said, okay, well, I just swapped the nine and the 11. Let's look at nine's parent. How do you find nine's parent? You say, okay, well, four minus one is three. Three divided by two is one. So nine's parent is here. Nine and 10, do they need to swap? Yes, they do. So we swap the 10 and the nine. And that's what I have down here. And this, our heap looks like this now, by the way. And then the array looks like this. We're now we've swapped nine, but we're not done yet. We still have to check nine's parent. Well, nine is at index one. One minus zero is zero. Zero divided by two is zero. So we go to zero's index and we check the five and the nine. Oh, good. Nine is bigger than five. We don't need to, we can stop our algorithm at this point. That is the NQ algorithm. Okay. What, so what questions do you have at the big, about the, that algorithm at this point? Sarah said, would the size of the array for a heap not be exactly the number of elements in the heap, but the number of all possible slots with garbage values? It uh, doesn't matter, actually. Good question. Um, and then uh, would the array be size 15? You can make the array as big as you want it to be. This is kind of going back to what we talked about with dynamic memory. You can make the array as big as you want. It doesn't really matter. It does have to be expanded if you run out of spots, but that's the only, the only limitation there. We don't necessarily, for our algorithm here, we could care less how big the array is. It just needs to have enough spots for our, all of our elements. Does that make sense, Sarah? Okay, good. Any other questions on this one, that algorithm? This algorithm is what we call the bubble up algorithm or heap or up heap, if you wanna call it that. I like bubble up because it's cuter. Bubble up means if we're putting in a nine, then we put the nine here and we bubble it up. We say, does nine need to change with the 10, right? Uh, oh, let, I, sorry, I already put nine in this one. This is the new heap. Let's say I put, um, let's say I put six in here. Where would I put six? I would put six there and then I would bubble it up. Six and 10 needs to swap. I'm blah, 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 bubbling the six to there, 10 goes there. And then I'm going blah, 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 and I'm bubbling the six to there and the nine goes there. Why am I doing this? I'm bubbling this up the heap as if this was a little bubble that could rise up to its top level. That's called bubble up algorithm. And this is what we're talking, that's what this, uh, this algorithm is actually called. What is the big O for this algorithm? Oh, that's the real question here, right? Big O for this algorithm needs to do what? It needs to take an element that's added at the lowest level, the lowest level down here, and it needs to bubble it up. Well, guess what? It turns out that the height of a tree is log base two of the number of elements in the tree. And you can figure that out. A height of one is one. A height of, a height of I guess there's probably a minus one in there somewhere, right? Like minus one or whatever, depending. And it depends on, on it's, it's basically log n uh, is, is you, can, you can round it to that. But you go one and then th as at this, at the first level, and then there's two at the, the next level, and then there's four at the next level, and there's eight at the next level, right? We're adding, doubling the number of elements at each level. Now, yes, some might be empty, but if you had the entire complete tree, then, uh, then you would have that. So how many levels do you need to potentially bubble up? Turns out you only need to bubble up log of n number of levels. This bubble up algorithm is a log n algorithm, meaning that in Q, in Q into a heap is a log n algorithm. It's our first real log n algorithm we've seen for a, an interesting data structure like this. 
Okay, it, that's uh, that's the way uh, that's that's the way we've done this this bubbling up. Now, it turns out, and this is beyond the scope of the class, but it turns out that if you randomly insert elements into any tree, let's say you have a whole bunch of random numbers, and you randomly insert them into the heap, okay, um, you can actually get uh, the average complexity is not log n, the average complexity is actually order one, as it turns out, um, which is even better, uh, but a little more nuanced about that, that argument. Go look at this paper that you can get. If, you, if you're logged into Stanford, you can go get this paper for free and read it if you want. Um, so you can, you can see that. Let's quickly take a look at a, an animation for this, okay? Let me look at this animation. Let me open up an animation. Here is an animation. Okay, let me put a whole bunch of things into the heap. Okay, uh, let me do let me do the one we just had. In fact, there's nine elements. I'm going to put them in. I'm going to do them in the order here, just so that it. Uh, I'm going to put them in the the previous order from up here. Okay, uh, let's see. We are going to do. Uh, here it is. Five, ten, eight, twelve, eleven. So I'm going to put. Uh, if I go here, if I do five and then insert it. In fact, I'm going to make the speed go a little bit faster. Uh, and then uh, five, and then ten, and then eight. Uh, let me see, eight, and then I forgot already. And then twelve, eleven, fourteen, thirteen. So I'm going to do twelve, <clears throat> and then eleven, and then fourteen, and then thirteen. No bubbling up is necessary yet because I happen to be doing them in order, as it turns out. And then what else do we have? We've got twenty-two and forty-three. Okay, and then we have 22 insert, and then we have 43 insert. Okay, you can go play around with this, by the way, if you want to take a look. Now, if I'm going to insert nine, okay, what I'm going to do is I am actually going to, let's see, I am going to uh, slow this down as it turns out, and I'm going to insert this. Watch what happens when I insert this, okay? Nine is going to go down there. That's where we put it before. It's going to check its neighbor there or its parent there. It's going to check its parent there. And then it's going to check its parent there and stop. That's how it works. Let's try another one. Let's say, um, let's say we were trying to insert uh, four. Where's four going to end up if I insert four into the heap? It, but, yep, exactly. Jonathan goes, hey, it's going to be all, all the way at the top. All right, well, where is it going to go in this diagram? Where's the next position? possible position. It's actually tell you what, let's not do four yet because I want to show you something over on this side. Let's do, um, let's do not four right now, but let's quickly do, uh, let's see, let's do, uh, I haven't done 20 yet. 20, if I did 20, 20 is going to go here. And does 20 need to move at all? No, because it's already bigger than 10. Let's see if that works when we insert it here. So if I do insert, then 20 should come down, go there. It's gonna not move at all and we're done. Now let's insert four. If I'm now going to insert four, where is it gonna go? Well, it's gonna go, the next place to add one is here. I'm gonna put the four there and then I'm gonna start bubbling it up. I'm going to see if I need to swap that one. I'm going to. I'm going to see if I need to swap the four with the eight. I'm going to. And guess what? I'm going to have to actually swap the four all the way up to the five. This is going to rearrange the heap in that way. Let's see if it works. All right. Four is going to go down there. It's going to check its parent. It's, it's going to swap. It's going to check its parent now. Keep bubbling up. It's going to swap. It's going to check its parent. Keep bubbling up. And we're done. No need to go back down the tree or anything. And that's our new heap. Pretty cool, huh? Pretty neat stuff. Okay, questions on that at this point. That's our first cool algorithm. All right, are you ready? That's, um, that's uh, let's see, so we already did that. Let me go down to uh, DQ. Okay, now this is the one that I want you to spend a minute thinking about, everybody who's here. And if you're watching this on video, uh, pause the video. Um, at like whatever 4x time you're watching it at, pause the video and, uh, and uh, try to figure this out yourself because it's actually an interesting, um, an interesting idea here. If I want to DQ an element, okay, which element, first of all, which element do I get back? I get back the five. If I get back the five, it means that I remove the five 
from the heap, which means there's a hole right at the root of the heap. In fact, this element is gonna be removed and I've got a hole right there. I want you to think about if I'm going to DQ, what, how do I rearrange the heap so that it ends up as a heap again? Okay, take about, take about three or four minutes and just think about it on your own. Okay, and then we'll, we'll discuss it. But this is a really it, an interesting, it's an interesting thought process to figure this out on your own. Okay? And if we were in, if we were at like a big lecture hall, um, we'd have lots of people like answering this. But for the people who are here, if you, if you want to uh, try, give it a shot, let me know. But think about it for a minute, okay, or for like two or three minutes. I'll give you a few minutes to think about it. Does anyone have any ideas what their little algorithm is going to be for trying to figure out, trying to rearrange this heap? You can put it in the chat or you can, uh, yeah, Jonathan, what do you think? Um, I was thinking maybe comparing the two children of, of the element and then, you know, the one with the highest priority has to go up to the, to be the parent. But then I, I was also thinking, what if, what if you have like, what if it's the leftmost element and then everything moves up a slot and you're missing an element? So I wasn't sure if that was Yeah, the let's best try way. exactly that. It's a, such a good example or such a good idea. So let's say that we're going to do this. Which one would you move to the top here? The eight. The eight. So let's say we move the eight up there and then this one's empty. And would you do the same process again? Yeah, and then the yes. 11. You move the 11 up there and then this one's empty. Okay, and then there's no children, there's no more, no more children or whatever to, or there or rather, so that that's it, right? Like there's no more children there, right? Well, is this a complete heap? No, this is empty now. And we said that we need to have that. So that, now what, <laughs> right? Can you just like, now what do you have to do? This is a problem, right? There's other, there's other problems with that, that sort of idea too, by the way. That it's not um, it's not going to work quite as easily as you uh, as you do that. Um, so Josh says, building on that, could we repeat it pseudo recursively? Could you repeat it? What would you be doing, Jonathan? The problem is, or sorry, what would you be doing, Josh? The problem is, you're you're trying to figure out like you've got an empty space here. Now, what do you do with this empty space? Do you like take something from over here and move it over? You know, move it over there or whatever. I mean, you might be able to do that, but let's say you move the Let's say you moved the 13 over there. In this case, this would actually work. But what if it happened to be that like this number down here was the 10, you'd move the 10 over there. And then what would you do, right? Because then you'd have to go back up again. And what we want to avoid is having to go up and down this, this tree too many times. It's just going to get, it's going to be untenable. Okay. So good thought, Jonathan. And, and that's exactly the way most people would maybe think about it. It's like, hey, let's start at the top. Hey, I have a question. Which spot on this heap, after I remove the five, when I'm all completely done, is going to be missing now? Which one is actually going to be the one that's gone? Because we're going to rearrange this. Which one is going to be gone? 
Like which spot is going to be opened up, I should say? The 13. The 13. So we know that that spot is going to be gone. Here's the algorithm. And again, if you want to, sorry for the people who are here, you don't get more time to think about this. But if you're watching this on video, pause it again and be like, oh, but does that give me more information? If the 13 needs to be, or if the one that's at 13 is gone, why don't we take the 13 and put the 13 up here? And you're going to say to yourself, oh my God, that's taking one that's so high and putting it all the way at the top where it should be so low. That would be terrible. But we are making it so there's nothing here, which is what we're going to end up wanting to do. Now, you know that this element has to be, I mean, well, it, it's got to be lower than all the other elements up that were directly above it anyway. But what we can do is now we've got something that when we move it, we now can actually use the same algorithm that Jonathan was basically talking about, except now we have something that we can really compare against and we will never end up with an empty spot. Let's see what happens. We call this, if we have bubble up, what do you think this is called? This one's called bubble down. Okay, we're gonna do the exact opposite kind of idea, except now we're getting a little more comparison to do. We've got the 13 here. We know it's not in the right place. So at least it happens to be in this case, not in the right place. If we compare it to both of its children, what do we definitely know? Well, we know that if we move one of the children up, and this is why Jonathan said, hey, let's, we got to move the eight up. Because if we move the smallest child up, it will automatically be smaller than it's what was its sibling because it could never be bigger it could never be bigger than its sibling if it's the smallest of the children right i mean if it's if we're moving the smallest one up it's bigger than the one in there which means that it's automatically also higher priority than everything on that side as well on the other side as well so let's do this let's check the 13 with its children which child is smaller the 8 is smaller let's bump let's swap the 13 with the 8 so it's gonna look like this. We're gonna have the 13, the eight go up there, and then the 13 go here. Is this eight okay for the, because we're never gonna to touch the left side of this tree. Is the eight okay for the left side of the tree? It has to be, right? Because it was already smaller than nine, and we know that nine was already bigger than, or rather smaller than all of its children. So we know that the eight for the left-hand side of the tree is fine. And we know that it's better than 13. So now let's take a look at this part, the 13 below. Let me uh, do it this way. We're going to now say that was that that was gone. This became eight. This became 13. We need to continue bubbling down. Let's take the 13 and check it against its children, 11 and 14. Which one gets moved? The 11. The 11 goes here, and the 13 goes down here. And then we do it again, 13 versus its children. Guess what? Its children are empty. We've done it. Do we now have a new heap? Let me redraw it over here. 8, 9, 11, 12, 10, 14, 13, 22, 43, 13. Bing, 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 bing. Do we have a complete tree or a completely filled tree? Yes, because there's no the empty spots are all here. Do we have a heap exactly? Yes, everything is lower than all of its children on both sides. We did it. That is the other algorithm called bubble down. Now, bubble down is, so that's the exact same, we, we did it here. I'm gonna show you another example in a minute. Bubble down the, did the exact same thing. What is the complexity of this? Well, we needed to take the 13 and move it potentially all the way down to the end. How many levels do we have? Log n levels. We only ever need to bubble it down that many levels. This is another log n algorithm. And that's a very cool property to have. Sarah says, do we not need to remove the 13? No, no, we removed the five. That was the one we removed. Remember what we did? Let me start over and show you what we did. We started from the, we we're gonna DQ the five. So what we did was we said, remove the five. Five gets returned to us. That's the DQ. Then we say, take the one at the lowest one. This happens to be at the 
um, heap size minus one, right? The heap size was nine. Heap size minus one is, sorry, was it five? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, it was 10. Heap size minus one is nine. So we take that index 13 and we just bump it up to the front and then we bubble it down. So we put the 13 here, we bubble it down. We need to move, we need to switch those eight and 13. We then check the 13 versus the 14 and 11. We bubble it down. This, this one becomes 11 and this one's 13. And then we're done. We're not removing the 13 anymore. It's in its right place. We have created a new heap and it's everybody's happy. Does that answer your question, Sarah? Yeah, I guess my question was, so do we remove the 13 from that bottom row after we, uh, since we already moved it to a different uh, index? Oh, sorry, you did remove the 13 here. Yes, you remove it right. from here. And also, by the way, it <laughs> turns out it doesn't matter because you're just going to, you are going to de decrement the heap size. So the fact that there's a 13 still there, it becomes garbage. You don't need to explicitly say, I'm going to make it zero or anything like that. You don't actually need to do anything with it. It just means that the heap is now one fewer element in it because you just removed one. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. Good, good question. I'm sorry for being unclear about that. Let's go over and check it. Let's see if we can remove some elements here. If I'm going to tell, if I'm going to say remove smallest here, which one are we going to move up to where the four currently lives? We're going to get back the four. Which one of these elements do we move up to the four? 14. Yeah, Jonathan, 14. So what we're going to do is we're going to put the 14 here and we're going to compare the 14 against the nine and the five. And guess what? The 14 is going to go down here and the five is going to bump back up here and the 14 is going to be here. And then we're going to bubble it down again. And we're going to say, well, now the 14 and the, and, and, and this is removed by the way. So we're going to say the 14 versus the eight and the 13. Well, the eight needs to move here. So the 14 is going to end up there. And that's what our heaps looks like. So at the end, when I when I push the ins, when I push the remove smallest button, you'd better end up with five, eight, 14 here, here, and here, and the rest should just stay the same. And let's see if it does that. This is bubble down. Let's see if it does that. All right, there goes the four. The 14 moves up. We check 14 versus its children. That means the five and the 14 switch. We check the 14 versus its children again. The 14 needs to switch with the eight, and we're done and it's logarithmic. Let's do it again. The nice thing about remove is it's easy. You just push the remove button again. Who's gonna come out this time? Well, it's the 20. And the 20, which is a really big value, it's fine. It just needs to bubble down. Watch, right? ready, remove. Remove, bubbles, the 20 goes up to the top, check it's against his children, the eight comes up this time. And then the 20 checks with its children, the 13 comes up this time. And we're done. Let me do this. Let me make the animation speed a little bit more. And I'm just going to keep remo keep hitting remove smallest, and we're going to see what happens. The 11 goes up. It checks its children. The nine comes up. The 11 needs to check its children. The 10 comes up, and we're done. Let me make it a little faster. Remove smallest. 43, 10 comes up. 43, 11 comes up. We're done. Cool, huh? That's called bubbling down, and that's how you do a remove from a heap. And it's efficient. Let's do one more. That I'll make it a little slower. One more is the 22. The 22 needs to come out, or the, the 22 needs to go to the top. The 11 needs to come up. And then the 12 needs to come up. Done. Pretty cool. I hope you think that's cool. I think that's cool. All right. Those are the two biggest uh, algorithms that we care about. Okay. And so that's what a heap is. Right? A heap is a tree-based structure <clears throat> where you've got priorities for each element. The tree, the tree structure has to follow the heap property, which says that the, all of your children need to be a lower priority than you for everybody in the heap. And you build it inside an array and you have those, those formulas which are enable you to get the, the indexes of both your parent and both children. So that's that, okay? All right. What we're talking about here is a priority queue, okay? Priority queues are um, when we store data in a priority, a prior, prioritized way. We've seen lots of examples of this before, emergency rooms, um, office hours. If I'm in my office hours and my department chair walks by and says, hey, can I talk to you for a second? I'm probably gonna prioritize the department chair for one minute over the students that are there waiting for me. I kind of like my job, right? So I'm probably gonna prioritize that in that sense. 
Um, but, uh, you know, that, that's, that's an example. Getting on an airplane, right? First class gets to go on first. That's a priority, right? Um, frequent flyers by row, et cetera. You've all got a different priority when you're doing that. There is no, and this is fundamentally different than all other positional-based data structures. There's no, like, we're not talking about uh, in the, you can have a heap where the, the top one and the one at the bottom are very close to each other, just, be, but everybody on this side is much bigger. You can actually have that as it turns out, because it's not really the same as a positional based system. It's not an array in the sense of our, our idea of what the heap actually means. Okay, um, in a priority queue, and there's no, no notion of position. It's not like you're gonna say, hey, get me the fifth element in the, the fifth highest priority. You can't do that. You can only get out the next highest, next highest, next highest, next highest, okay? So that's how that works. Priority queues have, um, have three functions. Oh boy, they're the ones we just built for our heap, NQ, DQ, and peak. They also might have an, a size, is empty, clear, all those things. Um, they might have they might have a peak priority. In a priority queue, you can represent the and and I didn't talk about the keys and elements. If you if you have a priority queue, you can treat this as if the priority is what's associated with the value you care about. So let's say you're in a hospital waiting room. You assign everybody by by priority, and when you put them in the priority queue, you you have their priority. Like let's say priority one is like is, uh, is um, I don't know, eight. And priority two is somebody else. Let's say, uh, let's, say uh, let's say we did it this way. Let's say we had, uh, let's say the next one we put in was priority three. Priority three was like um, uh, Catherine or something like that. And priority four was Pat or whatever. And our priority two was, was uh, Pat or whatever. Well, what you're doing is you're saying, let's store the priorities but also tag along a value, kind of like a map, in the sense that you've got keys and values here. We don't care about the values in the sense of our, like what they mean in terms of our heap. That's just where they're prioritized to. So that's why I say a priority in Q, you're given a key, which is the priority, and the element is the value that's going along with that. Okay. All right, um, I've got a priority queue example here. We're almost running out of time, but I've got a priority queue example here where we're saying, um, let's say that we are uh, putting in, in queuing a priority of five with a value of A. In the heap, we were in the priority queue, we would have five and A. That's the only thing we'd have in there. It would look like this, it would look like this, five and like A is the value. Then we're gonna enqueue nine with C. Well, nine, we're gonna put it here. We're going to uh, need, bubble it up, but doesn't need to do that. Nine and C is gonna be in there. Then we're gonna enqueue three and B. Well, how's that gonna work? Well, three is gonna go here and then we're gonna to need to bubble it up. So it ends up being three, five and A switches, five and A switches with three and C. And I'm just, I'm just kind of drawing that out here. Um, that's what we're going to end up doing with this thing. And if we if we said peak priority, what priority would we get? Three, nothing changes in the heap. If we said uh, DQ, we would remove the three, move the five up here, and we would move the three in the A, five up there, and then bubble down, which we don't need to do anything. So that's kind of the idea. I don't want to go through more details. You can look through this example um, in a little more detail if you if you want to. Okay, um, I don't have time to talk about building a heap from scratch, but what I will say is this, if you were to build a heap, starting by just adding, doing heap in queues, that would work just fine. You would enqueue one, enqueue the next one, enqueue, let's say you had a, a list of random values and you want to turn them into a heap. You could call enqueue, 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 and you would go through the bubbling or the bubbling up process for all of those elements and you would have a heap at the end. That's one way to do that. It turns out that there's a, and, and that actually is O of N log N. Why? There are N elements. Each one takes log N to insert into the, to in Q. The total building an entire heap would take N log N time. It turns out you can do it more efficiently with this algorithm that I show in the slides down here. I don't have time to show it to you right now, but basically it says, randomly enter the, or just put them all in the heat, in the array, and then start doing targeted bubbling ups. And it, uh, it actually works, uh, works just fine. So, um, but that's a more interesting way to do that. 
Okay. All right. I have run out of time, uh, but thank you everybody who came early today. I appreciate that. Um, for those watching on video, I hope, uh, hope this is all right. And uh, do the best you can to finish up the assignment. And we will see you on Monday. I'm probably going to have to do another Zoom lecture, or perhaps we'll have um, somebody else do a, a guest lecture. Uh, it depends. If people would rather see me, then I'll keep doing Zoom. If people would rather be in person, then I'll find somebody else to do it. So um, we'll make it work. All right. All right. Take care, everybody. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye. Thanks, Jonathan.